production of the spoken word. Later we can make it this evening. I hope you enjoy the show. I just want to pick three things I want to let you know about the performance and that this is a staged reading and presented by Vulcan Sport Performing Arts Director. And the show has three primary goals. And the first is the introduction of a new work, which is written by myself and it's a work in progress. And so this is all part of the playwriting process. They say they break show, great plays are not written, but they are rewritten. So they're watching, they're watching, they're performing, they're performing, finally you get to the final version, the final edition of it. Secondly, Balkan Sports' mission is to produce and exhibit the work of challenged artists across the British and State region, performance, visual, and literary art. And this is an opportunity for us to give a forum to some challenged artists. Thirdly, this is, we're partnering with a group called Watery Book Continuing Education. And this is an opportunity for us to showcase these talented actors and give them a forum in which to express their art. And so I'd like to thank you all again for coming. I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you very much. smoke all the time, not just on smoke breaks. It's quiet tonight, isn't it? Yeah, I guess everybody, since the New Year's Eve, everybody's been given the license to be crazy. You and me both, but it won't be that way all night. I guess since the New Year's Eve, everybody's been given license to be crazy. I guess that they just won't need us tonight. What do you mean, it won't be that way all night long? Joyce is bringing something to welcome the New Year. I guess... If you're probably right up on the floor, they don't need us. So I'm curious to come out of the smoking room again. I sure hope not. <clears throat> it's, I think it's the moon, Golly. Sure, here. You still believe in that old lunar mess? Modern science is proving that to be not true more and more each day. <clears throat> they say it's brain chemicals, but I bet old Buzz Aldrin would agree with you. You mean the moon guy? You're probably right about Buzz. Bus, they all say it's brain chemicals, but there was be a time on the floor, I felt like I was falling out of a looking glass. Yeah, I know what you mean. Have you ever noticed that the smoking room really kicks them out on the full moon? And I got a witness. Yeah, I do, but they still say that it's brain chemicals, <clears throat> not the moon. But the moon is close to full tonight, <clears throat> and there's someone in the waiting room right now. And, I'll just, and just, what is she bringing? Oh, wait a minute. I guess that your theory is right. Now, just what is she bringing? You must know. She's bringing a bottle of champagne to welcome the new year. Any good in this year's paper? Not really, but they're holding a contest called <clears throat> What do you think the future holds? The prize is $1,000 and a trip to Spain. Oh, well, that's easy. They're going to make an automobile fly. <clears throat> right after we... I sent in an entry saying that they're going to make the sidewalks move so we won't have to walk anymore. Oh, that's a good one. We can take to Spain, Cindy. Well, I would take you, but you were married. Oh, Harry wouldn't mind. When did we, when did we leave? Right after we take care of this guy, so that the doc can talk to him. Well, you know where to find me. See ya. Mr. Edison? Yes? Would you follow me, sir? I would, but I can't see. What's wrong, sir? It's the light. The light is too bright. What are you talking about, sir? What light? It's the light, dude. The light without a flame. It's too bright. Why me? Why do I get all the real movies? 
If I take you in, Mr. Edison, would you follow me? I guess. You have to put your cigarette out, sir. There's no smoking in the back. Did you not see me do that? <laughs> Thank you, sir. The doctor will be in the talk to you shortly. Well, Mr. Edison, what can we help you with tonight? It's the, not me, it's the light. The light is too bright. But Mr. Edison, they're just ordinarily gas lamps. No, they're not. Then just exactly what are they, sir? They are currents of electricity blowing through a piece of carbon and situated in a glass bowl. How is it, Doc? Well, he's obviously delusional. And you'll have to stay. Go up to room A and get a bed ready. It sure is a shame, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. The last time he was this bad off, he, he was muttering something about tinfoil talking to him. I know. Just where did he get these ideas? I don't know. Maybe it's the moon. You know, it's full tonight. You had better go get going. I'll watch the station. And don't forget to get him a gown. Okay. Mr. Edison, you all right, sir? What are you thinking about? I'm thinking about the kind of industry that would produce all of that light. Um, there must be some kind of power source to transmit the energy in a way of manufacturing all of that light. Just try to relax, sir. Let your mind go blank. Get some rest. Just get some rest. You don't have to think about all that. There are men who make a living that way. Uh, here, I'll turn it down for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. you manage to get, get talked into working the New Year's Eve shift tonight, Ron? <clears throat> I don't know. My girlfriend just came back from out west today. <clears throat> I picked her up at the station this morning. She'd been writing me while she was away and gone, and we were planning to spend a very romantic evening together and welcome in the New Year in grand style. So you had plans. Big plans, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Cindy is seeing your parents tonight, she thought I'd talk me into doing a double. So I to told them that I'd work tomorrow, too. Well, that's you and me. they were shorthanded for the holiday. Well, that's you and me both. At least I'm in good company. Thanks, Doc. I feel the same way. Yeah, I know what you mean. I haven't always been a stuck-up old doctor. I was young once myself, and on the hunt myself. But I had plans too, until Dr. Evans told me that his aunt out in California had died and he wanted to go to the funeral. But Dr. Evans, you know, he is young himself. I guess he wanted to see the wild wax and learn what kind of nightlife it holds. And what kind of marital opportunities it holds, mm -hmm. it holds if you catch my drift. Oh, but you had plans? Oh, that. I was just planning to hold Amy, my, she's my youngest. I was going to hold her hand because somebody at school had told her that the New Year has had fangs and breathed fire, and she was afraid that it would get her right at midnight. That's all. I hope she's all right. It's almost already 1030. You married men sure have it rough protecting all these females from dangerous beasts. Yeah, we sure do. But I wouldn't, but I wouldn't have to go back to being single again for nothing. One of these days, Lord willing, I'll have it rough too, Doc. Lord willing. What are you two up to? Even I couldn't even guess. Who, us? Yes, you. Well, we've been good boys. You promise. Good for nothing. Well, how is Mr. Anderson? He says he can't sleep because of the lights. Boy would ask for some meat, and he wants another cigarette. All right, he must. 
Chris, for the night. Uh, give him a sleeper. Now you go get this filled out. Will you count? And you can take it, take it to the smoking room one more time. Yes, sir. Give me a moment. Oh, sure. Take your time. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> Well, boys, what's new? What's that? Someone's in the waiting room. Well, let's go. What's, what's this we have here, officer? Meet the Wright brothers, Doc. Wilbur and Orville. We caught Wilbur here, riding on Orville's back, flapping his arms like a bird, while Orville was running down Ocean Drive through the Art Deco District. We can fly! We can fly! <laughs> two more who've had too much for the new year. We'll take care of them, officer. Okay, Doc. But just for tonight. I understand, Doc. Oh, Ron. Put oh, one of them in the common area, will you? Uh... And leave the other one here in the waiting room. I don't think they'll go anywhere. Yes, sir. Hey, Doc. Yes, sir. And just what is your name, sir? Orville Wright. And your friend? Oh, this is my brother, Wilbur. Is this where do you two come from? Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Is that your home? No, sir. Not. Our home is in Dayton, Ohio. So if your home is Dayton, why Kitty Hawk? We wanted to take advantage of the lift provided by the ocean breeze and cushioned by the sand. Well, if you say so. But what brings you here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. We wanted to celebrate. We wanted to buy a box of real Havana cigars when we go pub when we go um, public. That's why. Right. Celebrate? Celebrate what? The New Year? Oh that in the wing book. Wow. And just what is wing warping? And go public with what? It is the way that birds fly. We're, we're, we're thinking about building a flying machine, that's why. Don't you think you should try it out with the machine first? I mean, flying, that is. We got a little over anxious, didn't we? Yes, I guess you did. You can sleep it off here tonight. We have a room. But in the morning, it's back to North Carolina or Dayton, whichever comes first with the both of you. Uh, Ron. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take these two up and put them into bed. They're staying with us tonight. And put them in gowns. But don't put them in the same room. I don't want them thinking up any more grand ideas tonight. All right, you, let's go. Okay. Hey, Doc, we 
have another life one out another wife one out here. And he's heart setting his heart for ringing the bell. Okay, I'll give him the one over. Is he in the common area? Yeah, Doc, that's where I left him. Excuse me, sir. Just what is your name? Bell. Sir Alexander Graham Bell. I work with the deaf. Uh, that's very admirable, admirable, sir. But tell me more about your delusions of talking over wire. It's no delusion, and someday I will prove it. Well, that may be true, but I think you should spend the night here tonight. If you insist, sir. Ring, ring, ring. Here's my card. Call me. Ring, ring. Kelly. Yes, sir? Would you uh, show Mr. Bell upstairs? Yes, sir. Mr. Bell, come with me, please. Ring, 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 my brother analyzes silk movements around the pallets of bridges. Does it pay good? He makes more money than I do. Well, I wanted to join him. Being the eldest of the son of a pediatrician, I was expected to carry on the family tradition. And I had to specialize, no less. But why psychiatry? Well, I always thought mending a broken heart or treating a person for cancer would be meaningful, but with the emotions and perceptions of the brain at risk, I felt that him, is a, he is the one I need to help. To be, I felt it would be the worst of afflictions possible. When one cannot trust the perceptions of his own mind, I decided to help him. I believe healing the afflictions of the mind would be the most challenging. What about you? How do you become a nurse? Well, my mother was a nurse, and I've never met a finer person. Why so? I decided to follow in her footsteps. Why sight? The best pay for a male nurse. So you're in it for the money. You better believe it. It's all about the Benjamins. <laughs> what about you? What about me? What? <clears throat> Your aunt wanted to why, be a nurse? Why do you become a... Why'd you want to be, uh, become a psych nurse? My, my aunt. Your aunt wanted you to be a nurse? No. Everybody says she was crazy. Live high on hills. Tell stories about princesses and pirates. Sounds pretty crazy to me. Well, she wasn't, though. She, she w just was rich, and because of her, I lived to love her so, but you find a type of people you find here. So you have a passion for these kind of type of patients. Most certainly, because I, lo I love I love Aunt Bilbel so much. Who have we here? John Du Bois. And just what seems to be the matter? Well, he quit his job. Hasn't slept for a week. He's been on a buying spree in the best stores in town. Living high on the hog, huh? You better believe it. Uh, when he, we caught up with him, he was sitting on the floor of Creek Brothers, watching a rack of belts. He claimed that the belts were slithering like snakes. How'd you find out he was there? A salesman called the on-call emergency team, and here we are. Probably <clears throat> needs a medication change. You say that he's been stable up to now? Yes, sir. His boss said that he was one of the best workers. He didn't know what had come over him or why, but his therapist said he had missed a week or two. I am going to be a great actor someday. When we talked to him, he said he'd sold everything he owned, paid for a move to New York to start a career in acting. Why acting? He said he'd done a couple of years doing community theater here in town, and he did rather well. 
But New York, I mean, that's really quite a big step. Yeah, and he had it all mapped out. He told us he planned to finish his bachelor's degree at Brooklyn University, enroll at NYU, finish his master's, do summer stock, and do bid parts for a couple of years, move back to New York, and then get discovered for Broadway. And there was no stopping him. Well, not until he decided to buy Bell to Creek Brothers. <laughs> 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 Ron, take him up, to, up to, to the floor and put him in the room for one night. Uh, I'll talk to him in the morning and I'll write up a sleeper for him if he has trouble sleeping. My name will be in Lance. I'll be the talk of Broadway. Okay, Mr. Du Bois, let's go. Buddy. Some sweet oblivious antidote, cleanse the stuffed bosom that perilous stuff which weighs upon my heart. Well, it weighs heavy on my heart. Therein the patient must minister to himself. I'll not minister to myself. I want to see the doctor. Throw physic to the dogs, all none of it. <laughs> You'll have none of it. But I want to see the doctor. Are you the doctor? Yes, I am, and just wait your turn. Bill, oh, Bill Shakespeare, what brings you in tonight? Delusions of grandeur. I wish to be great. You wish to be? Well, I am. I'm the Prime Minister of Great Britain. And he shall make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with the knight and pay no worship to the garrison. sign. Take him and cut him out into little stars. Oh, you are quite the writer. Why, I know. But this time, I have a new twist. A different angle. This time, I have a soliloquy. And what great tale is a soliloquy? <laughs> it's oh, sorry, a dramatic monologue that gives the appearance of unspoken reflections. Well, it might work, but yours is a tough business to break into. True, I talk of dreams. Which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy. But how can we help you now, Bill? My cat knocked my lithium into the toilet, and now I need a new script. Okay, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. How may I help you? I have not slept in three nights, Doctor. No matter how much I drink, I just cannot shake this anxiety. It's obviously a case of bipolar disorder. We'll keep you here for it tonight. See how you do. What's your name? My wife calls me Winnie. Your given name? Churchill. Sir Winston Churchill. Kelly! I only came to this country for a brief fireside chat. Kelly, uh, take, take, take the, the Prime Minister upstairs and put him in room E. Don't forget his gown. That's, I guess I've got to see the Prime Minister of England in a hospital gown. What a hoot! <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Churchill, please come with me. It is Sir Churchill. Okay, okay, Sir Churchill, please come with me. Yes, ma'am. When can I have another cigar? Never! And please put that one out. We will see. Have a cigarette. None until the morning.
tell you that. I have got bad reports. But never mind. The very thought makes me upset. They took away my shaving. They were afraid that I was going to hurt myself. They were afraid that I would cut myself or do something other harm. It was just after the battle of over that our inability, our inability to take which I just did not see anything. Well, guess who are you, the president? Why, yes, I am. I'm putting it on E to the prime minister. Ah. Hey, when smoke time? I've been laying in here all night. I want a cigarette! No, Craig, it's not. It's been morning. You better go to sleep. What are you in for? What did they say you did? Oh, I'm in for a day. Okay, B. Oh, I'm only in for the day. My producer and my posse say I'm cray cray. Go figure. They say the same thing about me. Here's my card. Call me sometime. I know it's time to produce a rap rhyme. And I know that I'm good. Everyone's gonna dig it, even the brothers in the hood. Are you in show business? Yes, I'm always on the stage, and you know that they dig it cause that's how I get paid. I would love to hear your, what do you call it? It's dark. What? It's dark and hot as hell is the name, and I know I will crush it. There's nothing like it that's the same, and I know it's just hope cause Man, my rap is the dope. Well, I'm sure it is dope. I'd love to hear it, but right now, I have my own problem starting things. Starting what? What's the 411? Well, I believe that people can talk over wires. I call my invention the telephone. The what? The telephone. People call, could talk. To anyone, anywhere, you could check up on people, get information, bank by phone. The only problem is that the only two people in the world that believe in the telephone are my assistants, Watson and me. Well now, my friend, you see, it's you, Watson and me, DLX, that makes three. Well, thanks, Mr. X. Thank you very much. Well, now you're on my list. We've got to stick together in places like this. You're right about that. I truly hope that your rap is a success. Oh, don't worry. My game is tight. Overnight success, everything will be all right. Yeah, that's the way to talk. We've got to stick together. We're men with the vision, little bro. It's the We've world. We've got to, to keep our heads up. Never let them hang low. It's the world that can't see, not us. You know, that's right. Let's cop some Z's for the night. We'll get a cigarette in the morning when things turn bright. Yeah, sounds good. Good night. And a few.
the refs, they have fired on Fort Sumter. The Nazis have taken Poland. We have lost at Fredericksburg. We've had to evacuate Dunkirk. The Nazis are now in Paris. The ugly part is that we are keeping the government alive and well by force. For our government should be a government of brotherhood. And to the British people I say, carry on. Business as usual. I don't know. Lee and Davis are both two very tough good. Never give in, my friends. Never give in. Not to anything great or small, large or petty, except to convictions of honor or of good sense. Well, it's not good sense to keep on doing what we're doing. And as far as honorable, it's not honorable at all. A house divided against itself cannot stand. I have not become the king's first minister to disappoint the queen with the liquidation of the British Empire. Of all the trials that I have endured, I simply cannot compare any of those to fail to protect Fort Sumter. They have all been so great. And could I have anticipated the difficulty, I would have never thought that I would have survived. I have nothing to offer but blood and the duty of an Englishman. Come on, old man, let's get some rest. It takes another day tomorrow. You're right. We will do another day. your paper. It's her. <clears throat> it's who? <clears throat> the Roosevelt woman, that's who. Do you want me to get you a whip and a chair? No, I can handle those. Mrs. Roosevelt, we know who you are. I wish to see Dr. Collins. The name is Roosevelt. Now, Mrs. Roosevelt, you know that you need due cause to see the doctor. My illness is acting up. I wish to see the doctor. <clears throat> Now, Mrs. Roosevelt, you know very well that you have to go through me to see the doctor. So why don't you just cut your losses, tell me what I need to know, so that you can get in, so that we can help you. I am feeling depressed, probably due to my joyless childhood, and because I love beauty, I seem to look like a little old woman entirely lacking in spontaneous joy and mirth of youth. Is that enough cause to see the doctor, young man? Why, yes, ma'am. If you'll just have a seat, I'll let the doctor know that, that you are here and that you want to see him. Why, thank you. Is there something wrong? No. It's just that you look so distinguished. And I'm not very bright. My good woman. Women like you make me feel insecure. My good woman, no one can make you feel insecure without your consent. My name is Anna. Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. You may call me Eleanor. You may not feel very bright, but you are so very beautiful. Thank you, ma'am. Remember, my child, Beauty hath charms that no man knows to speak against. Really? Really. Remember, my dear, we both came here to see the doctor. 
That fact alone makes us equals. Good evening. Good afternoon, Eleanor. Good afternoon, Marilyn. I prefer to be addressed as Mrs. Roosevelt. Hey, well, Mrs. Roosevelt, please, don't try to be so uppity. It's been a long day. If you were any kind of doctor... I would what? You would listen to your patients. Really? Well, listen to this. Marilyn, are you having suicidal actualizations again? Why, yes, doctor, I am. Do you have a plan? I take all my medications with a big drink of gin. You plan to act on those plans? Please, Doc. I, I, I don't want to stay. All right, thank you. You better stay. Oh, Doc. Kelly. Yes, sir? Would you please prepare the paperwork for a 72-hour hole on Ms. Monroe. Uh, don't worry so much about Eleanor. She can take care of herself. Thank you, Doctor. Hmm. I just love the way he says, Miss Monroe. Just be if you could only see. Right. Orville. Edison. Thomas. Hey, Edison, do you think that you could invent better snacks, better than these cheese and crackers and apple juice? How about you call a pizza man? Hey, that's pretty good. You ought to be in movies. At the event of birth, right? Yeah, I guess. You can't put a cart before the horse. Churchill, Winston. It is Sir Churchill to you. And you two quite young. It's better than what they serve in Her Majesty's Army. Lincoln. Abraham. I guess so. I feel better. Come on, Pez. You gotta eat something, sir. Try to eat something, Mr. Lincoln. It'll do you good. Come on, Pez. You gotta eat something. You look like one of those friendly, spiteless birds. Being a president who can fly like an eagle, especially when the South shall succeed. I guess so. I do feel a bit better. I'll give you a there you go, Abe. Look on the bright side. Things ain't all that bad. Well, you're right. I have been through 
this episode before. But never, never last. The only thing that truly lasts is the love of the Lord. Don't worry, Mr. Press. Cause we've all been there, no matter what they says. Do not worry, old chum. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight to the ends of the earth against this illness of ours. Let it be known that when it comes to our illness, we shall never surrender. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. I mean, thank you. Monroe? There's no Monroe here. He died in 1830 after signing the Monroe Doctrine. What did he be doing here? What are any of us doing here? It's Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn? Where's there a Marilyn? I told you, dear, that they would save snacks for us. Oh, a quarterly? I'm Marilyn Monroe. My name is Roosevelt. Yes, ma'am. Look, there is a Marilyn. And ain't she pretty? You know that she's fine. Go introduce yourself. Seduce her with your rhyme. The boys? Here. You knew here? And last night, men change. Well, good luck. Gentlemen, I have your attention, please. After we have, when we start group, after we clean up, we'll have group. You mean that I traveled over a thousand miles to go to some group? I don't think so. You people said we would have a smoke break at 8 o'clock. So it's almost 7.45. So when do we get the break? Right after group. Well, count me in there. What's a few thousand miles? That's right, men. The sooner we get on the ball, the sooner the let us smoke. Are you going to feel like going to group meeting, old chum? show, old chum. Bloody good show. Okay, everybody. My name is Kelly. I'll be a nurse this evening. And I am just my, I am just myself when you introduce your, your name and your diagnosis. Wilbur Wright. Now, now, Wilbur. Ladies first. Why won't you two tell us your name? You go first, Eleanor. I'm scared. No, dear. You go first. You must do that which you think you cannot do. <clears throat> My name is Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe, and I'm a manic depressant. Bipolar, my dear, but very good, Marilyn, very good. Good evening, Marilyn. Thank you, Marilyn. And yours, Miss Roosevelt. Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. You may call me Eleanor. Good evening, Mrs. Roosevelt. Now the ladies enjoy, enjoy induce ourselves. What about you, gentlemen? Thomas Edison. Earl Simmons is what they called me when I became a son. But now DMX is the name. And you're going to see my fame. Bipolar is what the doc said. And it's not just in my head. It's a physical manifestation that brought about this hospitalization. Good evening, Mr. DMX. Orville Wright. Abraham Lincoln. It's a common name, but I'm a common name. 
You see that the good Lord loves the common people who made so many of us. You know, I'm diagnosed with clinical depression. That's rough. <laughs> you get used to it. How about you, Mr. Du Bois, John? Good evening, my boy. Alex Graham Bell, just Alex to you. Churchill, Winston Churchill. My wife calls me Winnie, but I prefer Winston. But to the staff, I am still Sir Churchill. Carry on. I find that a few shots of bourbon soothes the extravagant highs and depressing lows. Does anybody know what the day is? Monday. That's right, Mr. Edison. Does anybody know what the date is? January 2nd. No, no, not quite, Mr. Lincoln. January 1st. Very good, Mrs. Ross. Anybody know what the year is? Here is where I came from. Who knows the president? <laughs> For which one of us? Who knows where we are? Providence Hospital. That's correct, Herbal. It's goal time. Who wants to go first for goal time? I do. What goal do you want set for tomorrow? I just want to be content. I think we understand, sir. Can we? Yes, ma'am. Can I go next? Uh, yes. Certainly, Mr. Edison. I want to invent something that a hospital can use. Don't you consider it even stop? I am, I mean, no. I am Thomas Alva Edison, and you, you are just Kelly, the nurse. Okay, okay, group time is over. It's time for a smoke break and cigars, and go to smoking room and and go to back and go to bed.
but you will be able to put the fight, the fight back into your heart. You will be able to travel throughout the along the part. As we all know, the great ERS. You sound like my producer now. All these road shows. So you say that you have a flying machine. Almost in the bag. And this machine has guns and the ability to drop explosives. <laughs> You're putting words in my mouth now. Do the Germans have this technology? No, we're the first. Orville and I will be the first men to fly. Fighting in the south. In the south of London. Protecting London. In the skies. Thank you, Mr. President. This idea could serve the war. It could serve it considerably by years. But with better communication by generals, I would be able to keep in contact with them and to really tell them what I want to tell them and get response from them. Well, Mr. President, the telephone is still in the preliminary stages. We only have a prototype at best. A prototype? That would be well. I will still be able to communicate with them and get them to understand what they need to do and must understand. And what is that, Mr. President? That they need to stand still and understand from what's come up there. That may be all doing well, Mr. Bell, but your invention might put the telegram workers out of their jobs. Coming from a man that is going to put the candle and gas company out of business, that's quite a compliment. But how do you know how the phone will work? Well, each phone would have a number, and then there would be a book. Hmm. Very interesting. So you like that idea? Yeah. Yeah, but we found a piece of carbon rolling to a thread, and it worked light. Have you had this illness long, dear? Ever since I was a teenager, all the boys in high school liked it when I got manicky and frisky. If you know what I mean. Yes, dear, I do. I always thought it sickening that one human being would take advantage of another human being, especially when one's own happiness is dependent upon the happiness of those around them. How about you? Not since I was in high school, but since I began in public life, where I had to be strong or it would have destroyed me. Hmm. I just bet that it would. How do you find your strength? I have always had strong moral fiber. It's what gives me the strength to overcome my illness. Then you don't think that it's the moon, like some people say? Of course not. I'm not the moon man. It is an illness, and like any other illness, it can be treated. Give them time and they will find a cure. The moon is almost full tonight, and we all still have our feet on the ground. Well, at least most of us do. I don't know about that Wilbur Wright. <laughs> no, ma'am. I wish I was as strong as you, Miss Eleanor. You can be, dear. You can be. You just have to stand up, look your demons and fears in the eye, and show them who's boss. You have to do the things that you think you cannot do. Mm. You make it sound so easy. Easy? It is far from easy. But it gets easier each time you assert yourself. Well, I, I'd like to try, but I don't know. You can do it. I know you can. You can assert yourself. You will thank yourself for it, I guarantee. You have to stand up, look the world in the eye, and say, I want my fair share. Mm. But men won't like it. They like the fact that I'm a little spacey. 
Who cares what men like? What have they ever done for you? They cannot give you self-respect and dignity. Only you can do that. I don't know, Eleanor. Besides, I'm good looking and you're not. The only reason that you're strong is because you have to be. But just think of it. A strong woman with your looks. What a bombshell. Wow. You may be right, but my looks and, and moral fiber on top of it? I, I can go far. Real far. Lights out. I'm glad to you joined us. My name is Kelly, and this is money management time. And introduce yourselves again. Marilyn Monroe. Very good, dear. Roosevelt. Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. Wilbur Wright. Orville Wright. And in case you didn't catch it the first time, Bill Blutters. Says who? Or should I say whom? Ma says ma. Dad? Oh, no. Well, I guess if Mama says it, it must be right. Thomas Edison. Earl Simmons, bipolar. I appreciate your Mr. Earl. It's Lincoln, Abraham. The good Lord just made me a Thank you for your honesty, Mr. Lincoln. Sir Churchill. Sir Winston Churchill. Thank you, Mr. Churchill. It is Sir Churchill. Yes, yes, Sir Churchill. Hey. Alexander Graham Bell. Now, now that we introduce ourselves, what would we think about money? Money is just a tool to realize my vision. Money, the love of money, is the root of all evil. That is from the world. Money makes good servants, but poor masters. Money can buy love. I got it. Money is not required to buy one necessity of the soul. Y'all should look down on money. Why is that? I like money and the things that it can buy. The only reason that we need money is to purchase our heart's desires. And that just can't be bought with just money. You have to... Yeah, I got that right. <laughs> so you need money to get rich? I live for fame, notoriety, and the games. My rhymes make you happy because they are never lame. I like money and I work hard for it. Money, well, we, we live to fulfill a dream most of the time. Money can't, but it sure helps pay the bill. I live to fulfill my dreams too. Money just makes the ups and downs a little bit easier to take, that's all. You must find the most beautiful dream in your heart and go about living it, the money will follow. You must live for honor, for God, and for country, and follow it wherever it may lead you. Well put, my friend. How you make money if you need? 
you must anticipate the need of society, then set yourself to go fulfill it. And if society thinks it doesn't need it, you must create the need. The only way to make honest money is doing something you really love. If you are just doing this for the money, then it's dirty money. What about the assassin of people working nine to five? John, do they make dirty money? Well, you have to know. Y'all have a job to do. And likes and dislikes. If a man goes to work every day as a plumber to learn, to do his college, to support his family, and then he become the vision of the Lord. Besides being a plumber, a plumber is a gift. I should know for me what are all the rooms up here. Ever since, ever since says a man has his genius and I believe it. Okay, we can discuss about money. What about expectations? Or just or just or now, expectation does for us. Society wants you to be normal. They want you to act average. Who cares? Society does not want to advance. It just wants to sit on its rock and let men like... Do not forget that women do great things, too. No, ma'am. But let us not forget the men who do great things, too. We work our butts off trying to make the way... The the world a better place to live in, and they just laugh at us. Or they stick us in a place like this. In case not, you are in the wrong racket, my friend. <laughs> the wrong racket. Yeah, that's perfectly that's perfectly good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you all anti-social and anti-societies. We are not antisocial, but we love people. I guess that wish was were a little more far sighted than they are. Yeah, if they would only try to respect our ideas. Our ideas meant a lot to us. That would only try <coughs> to to try and abide. We are only trying to help in our own way. It is not easy having vision. It is a very lonely place to hold. It is certainly not easy, but I guess that was not meant to be. I do not know. It dumbfounds me. Can we leave? We have nothing else to say. I understand. If You must go if you want to. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Eleanor? What were they all talking about? I, I just want to make people happy. I know, dear. I know. Okay? Did she enjoy her trip out west? Yeah, she said she did. But that <clears throat> she didn't get much time to look around though. When are you when are you ever when are you gonna get married? You've seen her a couple of years from now. Well to tell you the truth, she's been hitting round about <clears throat> round about it lately. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready really ready for marriage. Oh come on, Ron. Take a chance. What have you got to lose? My freedom, that's what. I thought the same way until I met Joan. Now I wouldn't have it any other way. Kelly, did Ke Harry have cold feet when you two got in? Cold feet, you bet. I almost had to drag him down the altar. Well, Cindy may have to drag me. What was that? There goes old Buzz again. <clears throat> Should have known he, that he'd show up on a night like this. 
Sounds like he's already in the smoking room. And for a man who takes his medications rigidly, I would never understand. I can almost understand why he's howling at the moon. It's why he howls that gets me. Well, you two all just stop theorizing about it and get out there and do something about it. He'll be coming out of the smoking room soon. Thank you for coming down, Buzz. If I ever told you either reason, you are the only reason we have out of the time frame of this only hospital that was a new this fall. Just between you and me, Buzz, have you ever tried another hospital? Or do you feel as if you're married to us or something? Well, I have been to the General Hospital in the 19th century, but you treat me better. At least you try and understand. You don't see to mind on Sunday, I'm going to walk on the moon. Don't worry, Buzz. We believe you. And I bet we'll watch you do it, too. With pictures. And fly through the air like Uber and Argo's flying machines. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought you were better than that, General. Oh, come on, Buzz. We're having a little fun, that's all. We really do care about you. <clears throat> but to be honest, we really don't know if you're ever really going to walk on the moon. But that's just our opinion. <clears throat> well, I believe it. I am going to walk on the moon, no matter what you say. All I need to do is find a way there. Okay, Buzz. Let's go up <clears throat> to the floor, and in the morning, with side the you're probably tired. You're right. From all maybe, that alley. You're right. Maybe I am. I better get some rest. Whatever happened to good old days, everybody thought they were Napoleon. Now, even the mentally ill want to contribute to society and to make the world a better place to live in. Go so figure. I see that the bright birds are still here. I told them one night, Ron, go get Wilbur and Arvo right. I tell them it's time to go home. I like you two right front and center. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, to joy, joy rides over. It's time to go back to where you belong. And just where would that be, sir? Back, back, back into the wild blue yonder. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Back to the library under. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Can we get one more meal out of this insane asylum? I don't think so, but you can stay for snacks. How about letting us leave after smoke break, then we can say goodbye? Well, the doc wants you two out tonight, <clears throat> but uh, I guess that you can stay to smoke break. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. sir. Now, Marilyn, you be careful today. Those men will take advantage of a girl in, a, in your situation. I know. And you be particularly watchful for that Wilbur Wright. He's up to no good. What kind of man would act like a bird? My kind, that's who. Well, we had better get out on the board. And like I said, you watch out for that Wilbur Wright. Yes, ma'am. Thomas Alvin Edison. The man who 
found a thousand ways. It won't work. Who can't find a set of jobs? Hey, geez, and it's Wabats, right? You'd miss your way out of this place because it comes dressed in a suit, shaved, and has a good night's sleep. Bell. Alexander Graham Bell? Call for Mr. Bell. Call for Mr. Bell. You had better get some new material, hon. You're dying out here. Snack Is there anything else you want besides Miss Monroe? Miss Monroe. I just love the way he says Miss Monroe. No, but thank you just the same. Would you mind if I sit next to you while you take your evening snack, Miss Monroe? Why not at all, Mr. Wright? It would be a pleasure. What's it like, Mr. Wright? Oh, please, call me Wilbur. Well, if you insist, uh, Mr. Wright, I, I mean Wilbur. That's better. What's what like? Flying around in the sky like you do. Well, I've never actually flown. My brother and me are trying to build a flying machine, though. Ah, how exciting. You must have an amazing amount of courage to even think about anything like that. Just think, to fly like a bird. Well, I thank you. I do have an amazing amount of courage. Vultures fly like birds, too. OK, then, why don't you show us how? Well, I am not. I just think you have. Why would you do that? I didn't do that. She did it. But she's my friend. I know, darling, but what about us? Well, there ain't gonna be no us if you don't apologize. I'm not going to apologize, and that's that. Then you'll have to fly alone. But babe. Don't you but babe me. It's over. Okay, then, I'll apologize. Well, you'd better. I will. When? Right now, if I must. Well, then, you'd better be serious. Look, babe, here I go. Mrs. Roosevelt? Yes? Well, ma'am? Yes, what is it? Well, ma'am, I'm sorry. Now, now, Mr. Wright. There's no reason to say you're sorry. All you have to do is apologize. Yes, ma'am. Well, there must be some truth to it. Truth to what, ma'am? The rumor that you are courageous. Well, <laughs> thank you, ma'am. That was a big thing for a small man like you to do. And I accept your apology. And I thank you for it. Goodbye. You will. I mean, thank you, ma'am. Don't stop now. I'll see you in the morning. Now I see what you see in her. She sure is some woman. I know. I'll see you in group. Bye. Okay, bye. stay for a few more days. It's out of the question. We don't really belong here. 
not least not ethically, we were only giving the police a hand. Here's two more people who had too much for the new year. Yeah, I know, but it's different now. Now, <clears throat> they're like one of us. I mean, like one of them. Yeah, I know. I know. I feel the same. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. You get them to, and I mean do it discreetly, get them to pull that we can fly, we can fly number again, and I'll slap a 72 hour hold on them for strange and unusual behavior. That'll buy them some time. Thanks, Doc. I knew that you'd come through. I guess I'd better go tell, I mean discreetly inform Orville and Wilbur of the news. We can fly. We can fly. We can fly. everybody. It's time for afternoon group. Please meet me in the common area. It's time for afternoon group. Good afternoon. Welcome to afternoon group. Well, tell us your names and ladies first. Eleanor Roosevelt. And your diagnosis? Depression. Thank you, Mrs. Roosevelt. Marilyn Monroe, bipolar. And now for our newest patient, Mr. Aldrin. Yes, uh, Buzz Aldrin. Just call me Buzz, bipolar disorder. And someday I'm going to walk on the moon. Okay. Oh. Settle down, settle down. Hmm. Settle down, please. We, look, we have dreams here in all our group. What about your, what about your electricity, Mr. Edison? And what about your, your, your film crew, Marilyn, and what about your telephone, Mr. Bell? We understand that Buzz is dream. What it feels like if you laugh at someone or laugh at something, but you laugh at your other people's dreams, especially your other dreams? We're not laughing at him. We're laughing at ourselves. Yeah, we're laughing at us. He has such a beautiful dream, it makes ours look pale. It's kind of nice when you find someone with a more beautiful dream than your own. It, someone with a clearer vision. Then your own dreams and visions don't seem so impossible. <laughs> Funny, it gives you the strength to dream on, to try greater feats, to climb higher mountains. So thank God you came in here this afternoon, Mr. Aldrin. We all needed you. Thank God for men like you. I want you. Bring joy to the people. I want to believe in the end. So Winston Churchill, depression. I believe in worldwide freedom for all. Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. I want the world to be at peace with itself. Marilyn Monroe. I want the whole world to be happy. Right. Wilbur and Orville. I'm Wilbur and he's Orville. We can fly and we know we can. Edison, Tom Edison. I believe a flame, I believe a light without a fire. What about you, Mr. Bell? Alex Bell, good afternoon. I believe that man can talk over wires. Very good, everybody. Now we induce ourselves an afternoon group. Now who knows what the date is? It's January the 3rd. 
Who knows the president? FDR! Ulysses S. Grant! I give up. And now I'll be living in this place. Attention, everybody. It's time for evening smoke. Please go to the smoking room and get your cigarettes. Come on, baby. Let me have your address and I'll come see you when I get out. You like that airplane more than you like me. No, I don't. You're the apple of my eye, believe me. Why should I believe you? Eleanor said that you never did anything for me. And it's true. Well, you never let me. But if you give me your address and let me come over sometimes, I'll do something for you, I promise. Like what? I don't know, but I'll do something honest. No, why don't you give me your address and let me come over? Yes, dear. But I do have a wife at home to keep me. And what a lucky woman she is, sir. As a woman once told me, there was no luck to it. So you're going? I see you're going to the moon. Yeah. How are you going to get there? Flying? No. Flying is archaic. Okay, I get the picture. But how are you going to get there? Presume you do out flying. How are you going to get there? Presume get there. Flying is what? Flying is what? Archaic. Used up. Out of date. Primitive. Okay, I get the picture, but, but not, even if you go, how are you not going to, if you're not going to fly, how are you presume going to get there? You just need a little more vision, son. I'm going to take a rocket ship, that's how. A what? A rocket ship, a big long tube of fire coming out of one end. Well, I never, but they'll throw me out of this place. See you around. Good luck with your philosophy. <clears throat> Are you two ready to go? Good luck. As ready as ready can get. Are you going back to Ohio or Kitty Hawk? What do you think? Good luck, you two. <clears throat> and I'm glad that I met you. Pleasure is all mine. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. The pleasure is mine. Bye. 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 You work in this shift too? Is there any other reason? <clears throat> I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot, foot pole. You and your jokes. You should have stay out of a place like this. I will try. Bye, you two. Ron. Give me Thomas Edison, will you? I want to talk to him. Yes, sir. <clears throat> when are you going to let me out of this place? I have very important work to do at Vallejo Park. I'm very, very important. Okay, Mr. Edison, you'll be released as soon as the doctor says that you're all enough to go home. Oh, thank God, thank you. And the doctor wants to see you now. Is he going to let me leave? You'll have to talk to the doctor about that, sir. Okay. Good day, Mr. Edi Edison. Good day. When we admitted you, you were complaining about seeing a great white light. We believed you to be suffering from delusion at the time. Do you still see this great light at this time, sir? No, I do not. Scientists in Europe have been trying to consider a practical consensus uh, light bulb for years. And they say it's impossible. Who am I to bug the greatest scientific minds in the world? 
I'm just a humble, self-taught engineer. I'm glad to see that you, you have a much firmer grasp on reality than the last time I spoke with you. Whatever that has to do with incandescent light bulbs. So, when would you like to go home? I have no idea. I mean, seriously, I don't know. It's kind of comfortable here, and these people are literally like me in a kind of a way. But you know what they say, nose to the grass, so shoulders to the wheel. No, Mr. Edison. I don't believe that I've heard that one. What else do they say? They also say there's no substitute for hard work. They say the inter most interesting things, Mr. Edison. <laughs> but without any more metaphors, when do you want to go home? Tomorrow after breakfast. Done deal, sir. I hope that we have been of some help to you. Well, at least I gotta get some rest. Now I can get back to the task of building the electric industry. Whatever you say, Mr. Edison. <laughs> but with that, any more... Okay. Hey, Mr. We scheduled your discharge for tomorrow. Alright. See ya. Ron, go get me the president. Which one? How many presidents do you think we have in here? I'm sorry, don't answer that. Please don't answer that. These things come and go. Nothing lasts forever with the love of the Lord. I wholeheartedly agree with that, sir. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Was there something in particular you wanted to discuss with me? Yes, yes. We were thinking about releasing you, but... When you were admitted, you claimed that you were the President of the United States of America. Do you still believe this to be true? Well, I have things to do, sir. I definitely have things to do. And I don't really have the time or the inclination to figure out who is the President of the United States. Hey, is that a no? You can take it to be what you want it to be. Very well, then. We'll release you between 10 and 12 tomorrow. Well, I was here. I had a chance to work on my speech to Gettysburg. So thank you for allowing me the time and the place to do that. I must preserve the union. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. <clears throat> well, what can you do, Doc? You've got to set them free sooner or later. <laughs> I'm afraid that's all we really can do. Watch and pray. Maybe right, Doc. You just may be right. But if you're getting homesick, there are two more new ones out in the waiting area. A guy and a gal, and they look like the average pair were around here. Well, back to work. Uh, how did our illustrious Mr. Edison put it? Nose to the grindstone, shoulder to the wheel. You know, Doc, sometimes I really do believe that they're just people before their time. I know, Ron. I do sometimes, too. If only someone would just take the time to listen to them. But I gotta get back to work. Well, just who are you, the Princess of Wales? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, calm down. We've got an excuse.
extra room. You can stay here for the night. Or... Oh, okay, okay. You can stay here until you feel better. Doctor, doctor. You have to let me stay here for the night. I've been seeing this mouse for the last five or six days now. What does it mean? <laughs> Don't worry, Walt. <laughs> we'll put you up for a night or two. At least until that mouse dream goes away. <sighs> Thanks, Doc. It's really a shame. He's kind of cute. In my last dream, he was a steamboat captain. <laughs> You'll be alright, Walt. We'll take care of it. Let's just come with me.